first of all, I wanted to say how much I applaud the fact that you're having this event today uh, on housing. It's about a lot more than bricks and mortar. Uh, it is about our home. It is about the place we grew up in. It's about the place we started our family. Crucially for me, it's about the place we belong to. Now, for those of us who've been fortunate enough to be brought up in a decent house, in a good neighbourhood, we tend to take housing for granted. Uh, when I got married and uh, wanted to start a family, uh, both my wife and I were on relatively modest uh, incomes in London. And our families were such that there was no prospect of a big financial sum from them. But even despite that, it wasn't a question of whether we bought a house, it was where we bought it. In our case, could we buy in Chiswick? No, we couldn't. So we went out to Isleworth, which we enjoyed a great deal. But just think about that now. There is no prospect that people in our situation, my wife was a researcher, I was a finance officer at the GLC, of doing the same thing. No prospect whatsoever. And the question you might ask is, why is that the case? Now, there's a lot of reasons behind it, but the simple, most certain reason, in my view, is that we are building far too few houses. It is the basic reason why we face the problem we do. I think we have reached a point where the cost of housing in London, whether you own or whether you rent, is moving beyond the reach of ordinary Londoners. And it is, without doubt, the most important issue in the mayoral elections that are coming up. Now, to meet London's growing population and other needs, we should be building, over the next decade to come, half a million homes, at least half a million homes. In the last decade, the one that's just gone, we built 194 thousand less than half of the number we need so this is a real crisis but what i wanted to move on to was the housing and planning bill which is currently before uh, parliament it's in the committee stage of the house of lords and the bill follows a general election where perhaps for the first time in my lifetime housing was a seriously big issue in that election the core of the bill, if you like, it had really one simple aim, and that was to promote one form of tenure, home ownership, at the expense of another social rented housing. That's the core thing I think this bill does. And if you take it with other measures that are happening at the moment, the only reasonable conclusion you can reach, I think, is that social housing is being written out of the script. This effectively ends what has been a consensus since the Second World War and an extremely successful partnership between the public sector and housing associations since the 1980s. This is, in my view, a decisive break in what we think and say about housing. The government initially proposed that it would require, require in the bill, housing associations to offer the discounts that are currently available for council houses, which in London, by the way, if you lived in a property, a flat for three years, amounts to £107,000. So it's a pretty big discount. But what I think is less well known, apart from those who work in the housing sector, is that the bill for funding those discounts, those very big discounts that I've spoken about, will not be picked up by the government who put forward the policy, but by local authorities across the country. They will fit the bill for these discounts. And Shelter has calculated that this will cost them something like £1.2 billion a year, £1.2 billion, and require the sale of 113000 council homes. Now the government have said that they want to actually replace the properties sold one for one. It's very, very unlikely to be in the same area 
as the house that was sold because land, typically in those high value areas, is very hard to come by. It's also likely that it won't be a social rented property. It will be something called, as I'll talk about this in a minute, a starter home. So what you will find over time, not straight away, is that in the higher value parts of London, we will see them denuded of social housing. It's really important to say that this policy has nothing to do with the efficient management of council stock. This is first and foremost, a way to generate the money to pay for those right to buy discounts in housing associations. Even with those changes, it's very doubtful whether the numbers add up. And it's really quite hard to think of an example of a public policy where we start it knowing that the numbers don't actually match. The second issue I want to talk about is something called starter homes. What will happen now, though, is that starter homes will happen instead of social rented homes. They will be deemed affordable. Now, if I tell you that Shelter has calculated that in order to buy one of these starter homes, even with the 20% discount, you will need an income of 77000 per annum and a deposit of 99000 you might argue whether that really is an affordable product. But what's going to happen is those properties will come ahead of social rented. But for me, the real issue here is one of equity. There are no income limits on who can buy these properties, essentially. So anybody can buy them if they're under 40 um, and they can say that they're a first time buyer. So they will get, if you think of London again, after five years, the equivalent of a £90,000 gift from us, basically, from the taxpayer. But crucially, the funding of that 90000 90, gift comes at the expense of affordable rented houses for those who are on the lowest income. So there's a very basic equity issue here for me. The funding of new social rented housing will largely end, in terms of grant from government... Uh, from 2018, i.e. in two years' time, because the government has said they don't want to fund general new social rented properties. Now, for me, the message this gives to social tenants about their future uh, couldn't be clearer. Social housing, as Bernadette said, has fallen from over a third of people living in social housing in 1980s to just 16% now. With these proposals, I think it's certain that it will fall further. To have any chance of building the number of houses we need, we need to build houses of all types, all tenures, and we need every part of the house building sector to play its part. And what's more, we need to be able to build houses that will survive the next housing downturn. So I think we have a big issue here. We will focus very hard as this goes through committee on the issues. And I hope that you can play your part in lobbying lords that you know or lords that you don't know um, and MPs about the consequences of the bill as it's currently uh, drafted. It can be improved, it can be amended, and we should all play our part in it. And that's the personal ask I would make to you today.